Mayor Council. Uh, I'm Daisy Brunke, the Assistant Public Works Director for the City, and with me is our City Engineer, Kelly Green. Uh, we're gonna give a quick update on the city street conditions and our repair programs that we have. Uh, you know, we're coming out of the winter season, which is the harshest season for our street infrastructure. Uh, as you can see, that garners a lot of questions about potholes and when is my street gonna get fixed, those sorts of things. Uh, so we thought we'd just give a quick update on how we go about prioritizing those repairs So we'll do a quick overview, we'll try not to be too nerdy and too technical <laughs> in nature. Um, some of the different factors that we look at when we're, when we're pri prioritizing our list and then also um, we'll touch on the funding mechanisms. We know you guys know all about that, but just kind of a reminder um, so that you know who's managing which kinds of uh, repairs. Um, so a quick little fact, we have 226 miles of city owned and maintained streets. Um, so that distance is equal to driving to St. Louis and back. So um, every time a pothole pops up, it's one of several and <laughs> we have a lot of streets. Uh, prior to 2010, um, our streets didn't, we weren't, we didn't require our streets to have um, an aggregate base underneath of them. So we hear a lot, why are our, why are our streets falling apart, particularly neighborhood streets? And, and that's really the reason why, um, and I can go into a lot of factors and, and engineering statistics and whatnot, but um, not having that, that rock underneath the pavement is detrimental to our roadways. So we're hoping that the new roads that are being built that we bring to you to be accepted, we won't have those issues, but in the meantime, we have to fix what's out there. Um, we have uh, different functional classifications, we call them. So uh, arterial streets, electric streets, local streets, um, so Kings Highway, for instance, is an arterial. Uh, Bertling or New Madrid is a collector. And then of course we've got our, our neighborhood streets. So we look at these um, from our standards. We have different standards depending on the functional classification. And then we use this functional classification to, to determine our uh, prioritization of our maintenance uh, projects. And then this is just a, a nice visual um, so you can kind of see um, how those classifications work. Um, and then, of course, you know that uh, the city is very unique in that we have um, different ownership within uh, our city limits. So MoDA owns and maintains some of these, and a lot of our citizens just don't know that. Um, so a lot of what we do is just um, informing them and educating them of this. Um, Cape Special Road District, that throws another little kink into things. You know, we've got what would seemingly be a city street we don't even maintain. And then, of course, we even have some private streets as well. So uh, we do have a excuse me we do have a pavement management and assessment program uh, that is uh, housed through our public works division. Um, it's through the paper program, and some of you may have heard about PCIs and things like that before. Um, what we do is we go out and evaluate over 100 miles of our streets every year. We try to get to half of the city every year. It's, it's one gentleman that does it, so we try to be very consistent on how we go out and rate our streets. Um, what that does is the PCI gives us a number between zero and 100, and we'll see those on the slide here in a minute. Um, but we use those PCI ratings to determine, you know, kind of give the streets a grade. You know, if it's 100, it's great. If it's zero, it's, it's awful. Uh, so we use those numbers to help us prioritize um, our repair work. Um, and those numbers are also very critical when we get into our TTF and CIST uh, repair discussion. So there's the table um, that I mentioned. So you can see good is at 100% and there's a range there for those. And then serious would be anything below 40. Uh, so the city has about 33 million square feet of pavement. Um, we have about two thirds of that is concrete and a third is asphalt. Um, and when you look at that pie chart there, uh, based on the current data that we have, about 97% of our streets fall within this good or fair condition. Now, saying that, we know we have some streets that have potholes and that need some work. Um, typically, that's an isolated spot on that street. Overall, our network is in a very good condition. Um, we have our, the average PCI for our concrete streets is at 83, and the average PCI for asphalt streets is at 84. So we're, we're not just focusing on asphalt or concrete, we're focusing on both of them to try to get them up to as high as we can. Uh, we obviously have some different uh, funding sources for our street repair work. Uh, TTF is our major funding source uh, for new streets and repair. As you can see, it funds about $5 million per year. Uh, the next one is our capital improvement sales tax, or CIST. Um, that gives us about $500,000 a year for um, maintenance work. Next, we've got the general fund through the Streets Division Operating Budget, which that funds about 
a year for street repair, and those, that work is done in-house with our public works crew. Um, and then some of the kind of the lesser funding sources that we use, um, we're always looking for grants. Um, so if we can find a grant out there, uh, we just got a grant for some uh, pedestrian crossings at Cape Ross and the Kings Highway. Um, a lot of times grants require a dollar match, a local dollar match. Uh, so we have to keep that in mind when we're looking for those. Uh, casino revenues, uh, generally we get about 3.1 million from the casino annually. 40% uh, of that is dedicated to capital improvement projects. Uh, historically, that has been used for other things, uh, which is great, uh, but it's, it's just not a dedicated street funding source. Uh, same uh, goes for the motor fuel tax. We get approximately 1 million from that per year. So that can be used for lots of things. It's, it's not dedicated for street. For Public Works Street Division, uh, that division has 22 employees. I'm gonna focus you on the red down there towards the bottom. We've got two crew leaders and eight crew members um, that are dedicated to street repair. So if you, if you do the math, that averages out to about five miles of four lane highway per employee dedicated to street repair. So to put it in perspective, that's the full length of Mount Auburn Road that a single employee um, has to maintain. Um, so when you think about it like that, it's kind of overwhelming, but they're able to get out and, and do the work that um, we need to get done. Um, not only does the street division focus on street repair and street sweeping and, and things like that, um, but the same crew also gets pulled off to do other things. Uh, sometimes they get called off to help with mowing, uh, to do weed control. Um, hopefully tonight we don't get a lot of storms and get a lot of limbs and trees down, but they'll be pulled off to help with a storm cleanup if need be. Um, and they also help with uh, snow response. Uh, so this is our pothole patcher. Uh, some of you may have seen this before. Um, this is one piece of equipment that one person can run, so we're able to uh, fill potholes more efficiently um, typically, we would have a four-man crew going out and filling potholes when we didn't have this machine. So um, it's just a really cool piece of equipment that we're able to use and use our crews more efficiently. But this is the type of work um, when we say we're doing pothole work in-house. Uh, this is what we're typically doing. Um, <coughs> some more photos of our guys. You'll notice they're not doing brand new streets. They're typically going out and doing panel type work. They might be doing a couple panels here and there, um, but they're not ripping out an entire street and putting that street back. Um, so our public works, I mentioned we had $90,000 in our street operating budget. Um, we were able to do about um, 35,000 square feet of pavement repair each year um, with those dollars and our crews. Um, like I said before, sometimes our uh, size of work area is limited. We don't want to rip out you know, an entire street and then we get pulled off for a storm response and we can't come back for two weeks. I don't think those folks in that neighborhood would be very excited about that. So we have to be uh, cognizant of what we're ripping out and when we're able to put it back. Um, we also, like I said, we have 10 folks that are focused on street repair. Um, and then typically what we're doing is more rapid repair. Um, either a panel blew up and we can go out and fix that quickly, or we've got a pothole to repair, um, we can certainly get to that. I know you're all very familiar with PTF. We're so grateful and, and fortunate to have that, um, that funding mechanism available for us. Um, it's produced a significant amount of funding. Um, these are the TTF six uh, specific projects. I'm not going to go into these, but you can see the ones that are highlighted in green are maintenance and um, uh, type projects. And, and we heard, of course, um, throughout the TTF uh, process that that's what is the most important to um, citizens here. And so we are uh, focusing on those. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is, um, and this is where we're, we're very fortunate, um, we've got $13 million with TTF-6 to use towards um, uh, other maintenance projects. So we have the concrete street curb and gutter repair, we've got the asphalt program, and then we have the sidewalk program. Um, and so I know a lot of these questions are going to start coming up now that uh, we're into the TTF-6, and so um, I just wanted to explain briefly how we prioritize our maintenance programs. Um, we look at the PCI data that Casey was telling us about, um, but also um, because we have the opportunity to, to do a larger scale than what public works can do, um, we can look now at the functional classification, traffic counts, so we can get like a bigger bang for our buck, right? Um, if, if the majority of people are driving down Sprig Street and that's where we need to focus, well then that's what this funding source should be used for um, as opposed to the funding sources that, that Casey and Public Works has. Um, also, we're not there yet, but I want you all to know that we're investigating um, pavement preservation treatments. This is for our asphalt program. Um, our asphalt system is in a really good shape. Um, typically in the past, we would just go and do what we call mill and fills. We'd mill two inches, fill it two inches, and be on our way. 
Well, with asphalt, it's different from concrete in that we, there are preservation treatments available to us. And so maybe it's, maybe it's not ready to be milled and filled yet, um, but uh, we can put a treatment on it and make it last another five years or something like that. And it's not something historically we've done a whole lot um, here in the past. But now that we've got our system in a really good place, now is, is a good time to do that. So we've been investigating that, and um, you'll probably see different programs as opposed to just our typical mill and fills in the future. Um, and then, of course, our sidewalks. Um, you guys probably are aware with Simpo. Um, they, they, did, um, um, they gathered data for us to tell us um, where our sidewalks are. And so now that we have that data, we can prioritize what our um, sidewalk repairs need to be so that we can um, come in compliance with the federal guidelines there. Um, so, you know, we're just not throwing a dart at a wall to pick our streets. There's a process behind it all, and I just wanted you all to understand that. Um, um, the final funding source that we've mentioned and we'll talk about is our capital improvement sales tax. That was approved by the citizens in August of 2019. We are again very grateful for. Uh, that funded about a half a million dollars a year for street repair through 2034. Um, it's, it's awesome that our voters continue to realize and understand the importance of our street infrastructure here. Um, we use the PCI data um, that we were talking about earlier to prioritize the streets that we um, are able to repair with those dollars. This is the list of streets that we are currently working through um, that we have been out to be completed. Um, it's about 148,000 square feet of pavement. Uh, it is a 2020-2021 uh, program. Uh, we were finishing up some projects when the CISD funding started coming in, so we, we did a, a basically two-year program. So instead of a half a million we did out, we did out about a million dollars worth of work with this program. Uh, and the contractor is currently working through uh, to get those streets done. So very quickly, just to uh, summarize, uh, PCS is our major and most significant uh, funding source uh, for street repair. It funds our major street projects and any significant repairs, uh, new streets, curb to curb, rip out, put back, uh, and Kelly and her team administer those projects through the engineering division. Uh, next, uh, the next biggest is the CIST, uh, which we do mainly large street patching with that. Uh, that could be some curb to curb work or longer stretches of streets, uh, maybe some intersection work, uh, those types of things. And that contract is administered currently through our public works department. And then lastly, uh, we've got the public works crews that are able to go out um, and do about 35,000 square feet of pavement repair per year. Um, but again, sometimes get pulled off to do other things. But we're able to get the potholes um, and some street channel work that needs to be completed. Uh, so with that, we've got the, the major game players uh, for street repair up there on the screen. And uh, we're happy to answer any questions that uh, anybody has. I think you're doing a great job. I think it's a great process. <coughs> I know that at times things change, and you may have a situation where a concrete street can fall in, and you got to rechange your priorities. And that happens, but that only happens when people report those things. So I would encourage the public to report issues that seem to be more serious, and we can get on. Mine's more of a statement, and that is, you know. I got a council five years ago. I had no idea. Like, I, I was like, our roads are crap. They're, they're the worst I've ever seen. We've got to do something. And then quickly, you get information like what you guys gave tonight. And, and, I, and I use it just like I do economic data, unfortunately, crime data, any kind of data we get up here. We, we know that we're in a good spot for the residents. I think a lot of times they want better, and I don't blame them, I do too. Um, but with that, I can say, hey, we've got a, we're in a lot better shape than a lot of other communities. And so information like this, I think we need to get out more and more to our residents, because once you let them know, when you look overall, that we're at a 94% on 97, 97, I'm supposed to go with numbers too. Um, I think once you get out that message, I think people can have a little bit more patience. And a lot of times that's what it is. You know, I think they've seen that pothole for six months, it's drove them nuts. And, but once they know the process and how thorough you all are, really are, I think they can get a lot of patience with information. So well, I, kudos I, to you all for, for what you do. And, and, uh, and I try to, every time we have this presentation, I try to tell my constituents the same thing, 
hey, we're on it, go to the City of Cape website, you'll get the, the list of repairs that we're doing. And, and, and they seem to, once they have an answer and are listened to, it all is mostly subsided. Well, the TTF-6, if the citizens spoke and we listened, and half of that money is Absolutely. going towards street repairs, where in the past it's been a very small percentage of that. So we keep this up, and you know, the percentage of our streets that are, are good is going to drive <coughs> a lot more. And that's key. 